so I should be more like Captain Discreet over there. I'm the Flash! Yeah. Yeah. Hey, the Flash. <laughs> what? Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on The Flash Season 5. So just quickly, there will be a giveaway in this video for The Flash Season 4 on Blu-ray or DVD. So enter that giveaway. All you have to do is leave a like on the video, leave any type of comment in the comments section down below, and be subscribed to the channel, and you're entered. So I'll choose that winner in about, uh, you know, about a week's time. So we are about five and a half weeks away from The Flash returning to our screens, which is of course very exciting. And over the next two weeks at least, but possibly even within the, this week sometime, we could get proper episode one trailers for all of the DC TV shows, that of course including The Flash. But for all of that, just keep your eye out on my channel as this is the place to get those trailer breakdowns first. Now what we are going over in today's video is another round of apparent information coming from the set of The Flash. Now I think at this point there have been three major drops of information like this, with the first two having some stuff from it be revealed as true from character castings and stuff like that. But then the third one seems to have just been like a troll drop, which doesn't surprise me, it looks sort of trolly. But that person was just posting through Twitter. Usually the real ones are posted through, through like 4chan or Reddit because they're like the, the hot spots to drop it. So this drop is coming from YVR Insider on Reddit. And for those that didn't know, YVR is like the abbreviation for Vancouver, uh, which is of course where The Flash is filmed. Now this account that posted this said they would also post some stuff on the 100th episode as well. They were just waiting to get something confirmed or something like that. But of course, take all of this information with a grain of salt. Two out of the three drops that we have had have resulted in real information, uh, you know, those drops being true. But it's important to not spread these as fact, just as like apparent rumors and stuff like that. We just covered here to go over it all, give our thoughts and all that good stuff. But of course, do let me know in the comments section down below your opinion on these. And um, yeah, and of course, don't continue watching because this does contain potential spoilers. But up first we have, Barry's suit is the same one that we have seen in promo material. No chin strap added, neck has just had a fix, nothing big. So obviously we have had a few different shots of the new suit for season 5 with some looking really good and some causing concern amongst viewers. And one of the common complaints is that the suit doesn't look good without the chin strap that we have had since season 1. Now Grant Gustin who plays Barry Allen did say that there would be some changes to like the head area of the suit, I think that's what he said. But going by this, it won't be the inclusion of the chin strap, but something to do with the neck. And as I pointed out in some videos following the extended trailer and those different trailers that dropped in the past week or so, when Barry moves his head down, you do get like sort of a, like a flap or like an opening in the neck area, which doesn't look that good at all. So this could be that fix, or it could just be the material and design of the neck as a whole that goes and gets a change. Who knows, we'll have to just wait and find out, I guess. Up next we have, most of the early parts of the season so far have to do with the team preventing things from occurring from Nora's future timeline, which has changed due to her time traveling. So we know that early on this season we will learn what Nora's mistake was. They have said we will learn that pretty early on. And I think we get the general gist that her mistake is just her traveling through time and, well, messing with the timeline. But it did seem that due to us learning what this mistake is fairly on, that it might take us, you know, a while to learn what her mistake caused, so like the repercussions and stuff like that. Whether it was the villain of the season was created due to her or something else. But what it looks like is that Nora will possibly know exactly what happened and what is different in the time that she returned to in comparison to the time that she traveled back to initially and all of that. So this could link into that episode three title, which is called The Death of Vibe, which of course we know will feature a newspaper or just a news article on Vibe being dead, so maybe Nora changing stuff resulted in the death of Cisco in the future, and Team Flash have to prevent that from occurring. But it sounds like there will be multiple instances of that, some big, some small, but I'm interested to see what else will be included in all of that. And also it is important to remember that Nora did have the notebook um, that she was writing in earlier in the season. She does walk into the West household at the end of season four with that notebook. So maybe that's, she's written down certain events that happened when she traveled back in time and maybe how stuff changed or something like that. So maybe the notebook will be of, of importance. It's like how the timeline should be and what it is right now or something like that. Now the next one to go over is Iris is still in Star Labs, but not in the role that we saw in season four. And then they put in brackets going by scripts. So I'm guessing just in the scripts, it says that Iris isn't the leader or something. I don't know. But yeah, it's not too much to go over here, really. 
It would be a bit silly to assume that Iris would just leave Starlabs completely and Team Flash completely with her journalism thing starting up again. Now they don't straight up say that she isn't the leader anymore in that leak or information little piece there, but they just say that she won't be in the same role as season four. So you would just have to think that she isn't the leader anymore and someone else will take over that responsibility and role, most likely Cisco or something. But yeah, not too much of a surprise considering that Iris actually has a storyline this season. And I don't think they really want to shove her being in the leader again to interrupt that. And let's hope they wouldn't think of that. Now I am going to combine two parts here. Like if you see the Reddit post, you'll see that they're separate. I'm just going to put them together. Now the first of these is Nora has a love interest and the second of these being that Ralph has a love interest. Now I didn't put these two together because I think Nora and Ralph will be the love interest in, in like in, that we're talking about. I just did it to save time. So with Nora, no idea who it could be. Literally no clue. And with Ralph, you would have to say Sue Dibney would be this love interest. But we haven't got a casting thing for Sue at all, unless they have kept it on the down low and haven't put a casting call for it out there yet because maybe they just found the actress that they wanted to play her. They've brought her in. No need for a public casting call. But man, it would be funny to see Nora and Ralph together just to get the chaotic meltdown reaction to it on West Allen Twitter. And for those confused why that would be funny, over there, they absolutely hate Ralph Dibney. Like if you mention Ralph Dibney, it's like saying Bloody Mary three times or something. It's not the the the, uh, the response to it and the follow on is not going to be good. And next up we have the new Wells. And then they put in brackets IMO, which means in my opinion is the best Wells so far. So we know that the new Harrison Wells or just Wells, I guess for this season is that of Sherlock Wells. Now we don't know how he will be brought in, but they have said that he is smart, funny, and not the most trustworthy of people based off their first impressions. But when is a Wells like even trusted early on? Like never. But it is cool to see YVR Insider saying that in their opinion, he is the best Wells. It will be hard to beat Harry as I think he suited most parts of the show really well. But you know, Sherlock, bring it on, try and impress us. Up next we have, don't expect that much CSI work, even if they say they're doing it. So this has caught me a bit off guard now. I'm not too sure if they said that Barry would be jumping into more of the CSI work this season, or if there was just like a general assumption that he would. I'm not 100% sure, but this isn't really anything all that new. Like we haven't had proper CSI work since like, well, the pilot really. Sure, it would be cool to have Barry doing more of that CSI work on the show because, well, he is a CSI but they do seem to struggle writing their stuff and incorporating it well. The thing that just made me think that, well, it could work this season and what could be the reason, you know, why it shows up more is just due to all these murders that will be going down this season. You would have to think that Barry will be in the middle of all of that, which would help Team Flash get leads on the, individ uh, the individual, sorry, committing these murders, but maybe that could be all done off screen, which wouldn't surprise me in the least if, you know, that's the way they do it, if I'm going to be completely honest. And the second last piece of this information drop is, well, actually has to do with murders. And Sakata kills multiple people very early on in the season. MH have torn his family apart. And I'm going to assume MH stands for metahumans. Now, they did say at Comic-Con this year that there would be many deaths this season, with there also being the possibility of a major death on the show. So I think once they brought this up, we all assumed that Sakata would be the, you know, the one responsible for these deaths due to his story from the comics, and then most likely just like straight up adapting that from the comics for the TV show. So there is no real need to dive too deep into all of that. But the next part of that is interesting where it says that Metas have torn his family apart. Now, I don't know if that is, you know, being literal, that they have literally tore their body parts in half or something. If so, that's pretty grim. But as we saw in that scene that was attached to the trailer from Comic-Con, Sakata had a family, but something grim has happened to them, and he is in some sort of, like, crusade or on some sort of crusade to sort that out, whether it be revenge on the person that did it, which, you know, appears that it maybe could be the Flash, or seeking out a way in which to bring them back. And finally, to finish off this most recent drop of information we have, and for those wondering, from what I have seen and read, We Are The Flash or anything similar to that has not been said apart from a throwaway line by Nora in episode two. So it's interesting that they're being specific there and actually saying episode two. So I'm not sure if this is meant to be a serious ending to this drop or not. Obviously, We Are The Flash became quite the meme for those that watched the show last season, but I'm surprised it isn't used or even, you know, anything similar to it is used at all. You know, it's very surprising. I am interested and just, well, intrigued to see what this throwaway line from Nora is going to be. Maybe it's something where she, you know, says, We Are The Flash because in her time she is probably The Flash, but currently, you know, in present time, Barry's The Flash. 
so that makes them both the Flash. They are the Flash. But overall, I wouldn't say this information drop is as exciting as the other ones that we've gotten, but I think that might be, you know, or might point to this one being the more legitimate out of the ones that have dropped. In the past, the drops that are the most accurate to what we end up seeing are the ones that don't really like blow your mind or anything like that. So it will be interesting to see more on this season of The Flash and whether any of these are the real deal. As I've said, two of those three drops that already uh, came out had information that ended up being true. The one that I remember from the top of my head was the Ragdoll thing. Ragdoll did get cast on this, uh, on this season of The Flash and that was one of the pieces of information on one of those drops. And there was like, I think two from the first one and just one from the second one, but I can't remember them. Uh, remember them off the top of my head. But thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As I said, if you want to enter that giveaway for The Flash Season 4 on Blu-ray or DVD, all you have to do is leave a like on the video, leave any type of comment, which would most likely be an opinion on what we've gone over in this video, and be subscribed to the channel, and you're entered. And until the next video, guys, I'll catch you later. Goodbye.